Hi everybody, welcome to another career tutorial. I'm Crate Man. What we're going to do this time through is we're going to make uh, snow. We're going to make it. Uh, we're going to make snow fall. Actually, um, it's a real quick and easy process. But I'm going to drag it out a little bit to, for the sake of the, t t the uh, tutorial. So um, let's go ahead and drop a plane into our scene, and uh, let's edit the shader on that. We're going to create a new master shader, and this is going to be a texture map. And I have uh, I have some particles made up. Well, they're not particles, but I have some images made up that I'm going to make into particles. Um, and I got the I got them off the internet, and then I uh, adjusted them a little bit to uh, just for the tutorial. So um, let's go ahead and throw a little glow in here so that we can kind of see what's going on with these guys. And we're good to go. And that's our snowflake. That's uh, what we want, except it's a little big. Let's go ahead and make that one. Then tab, one, tab, one. And now that's, that's where we want it. That's what we like. Now let's go ahead and duplicate it. Because it has a, a special, you know, some other special stuff happening with it. Let's go ahead and duplicate it, duplicate it, and duplicate it. And, uh... Go into the shader. I'm going to create a new master, and the glow is in here. I, I changed the glow in in the first one, and I want it to be the same glow all the way around. That's why I duplicated these guys. But we're going to change the uh, going to change the image on the on the particle to that. We're going to go down here, and we're going to do the same thing to this one. We're going to create a new master. And we're going to go here and these are really good snowflakes you, you can find up some really good ones these just happen to be on one picture so uh, but there are some really cool ones out there and jump out of there do this to this and this is our last one Okay, we're good to go. Now let's grab a particle emitter. Let's throw it in here. And uh, let's do some adjustments. First of all, we want objects. And let's go in the advanced tab and just add those right now. Let's go ahead and add a plane here. And add again. And you, if you want to differentiate between your particles if you want to kind of know which ones your particles are you want to probably rename them but for the sake of tutorial I'm not going to do that uh, I'm going to turn the bounce factor off and we're good to go now uh, let's go ahead and do an emission cube too uh, let, or yeah we're going to adjust our emission cube now you notice that it's zero 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 um, that is the center point of your particle emitter now if you bring this up to uh, 20 and you can't tab through these 20 or I can't it might be a Mac thing by 20 uh, let's look at what our what our particles look like That's what they look like. It looks just like snow, only you can't see the snowflakes all that well. We're going to kind of adjust those so we can see them. Let's go ahead and make our particles. Instead of 0.20, let's make them 5. Now let's see what we got. This is a 20 by 20 by 20 um, emission cube. Check this out. That's 20 by 20 by 20. Uh, that little yellow outline that's the amount of space that you have for your particles and there's our snowflakes represented right there now what we want to do is make sure that they're falling like a snowflake would kind of slow uh, just yeah slow and kind of lazily falling from the sky so let's uh, we don't need 200 particles let's go ahead and do 50 
with no variation, zero variation. Let's go ahead and zero these guys out too. Zero. And if you take you if you take the randomness out, it's going to uh, it's going to make it not really real realistic. But uh, like I said, these are things you could probably adjust later. Um, our velocity instead of going up uh, at 11.25, let's go ahead and make it minus two. Uh, mass is one, that's good. We're gonna bring our size back down to one. And let's have them die on impact. And we're going to unlink rotation from trajectory so that we can, now this is something you might wanna make note of. You can't really do a whole lot of stuff with the rotation right here until you take uh, unlink uh, rotation from trajectory. Now you have, now it opens up all these guys and you can do uh, different orientations. Now just be aware, this little area right here, you can only go to 180 or minus 180. You can't do 360 degree turns. Uh, you gotta kinda go from one to the other, or one, 180 to minus 180 to 180 or, or vice versa but uh, yeah you can only do 180 and then you can kind of adjust the variation in in the rotation that or in the orientation that way and then the rotation speed happens here and this only goes up to 100 100 and that means that this is going to turn a full 180 degrees throughout the course of the animation. 100% of the animation is going to have this thing turning. Okay. Um, yeah, just so you know. Okay, so we have our 20 by 20 by 20 emission cube. Uh, all our particles are set. Now let's see what we got. There you go. And they're in this nice, confined little area. Let's go back in here. We're going to have to do just a little bit more adjustment. Uh, everything's cool here. Oh, no, it's not. Let's go ahead and generate our particles before start. And let's do one second, zero, one. And that's going to throw 50 particles into the scene. Oh. Yeah, there we go. 50 particles into the scene before the animation even starts. So you want to kind of adjust your, your if you're doing an animation, make sure you adjust these accordingly. Make sure that you know. This stuff isn't going to animate seamlessly uh, th because of the randomness of the of how they're getting generated and they're turning and stuff. So it's not going to, uh, to um, go seamlessly. Oh, one other thing we got to do is go into the Advanced tab. And it's kind of it's kind of jacked that you got to jump back and forth when there's so much space in between some of this stuff, but uh, it's what it does. Um, our local gravity, instead of minus 10, we're going to have that. We're going to do minus 5. And now you can see how the particles just go kind of slow. And I have, an, I have a, an example made up so we can kind of check some things out here too. And this is how it looks when it's, when it's rendered out. Now I threw a little bit of rotation on the, on the uh, snowflakes to kind of give them a little bit of a, of a uh, I don't know, just kind of differentiate them. But what you can do too uh, is uh, in the right hand side of your of where size is at, you can uh, throw some variation in size, you can throw variation in speed, throw variation in weight, and uh, have a little bit more, uh, you have a lot more control over over it than, you know, what it, what, it show, what it seems like at first. But you notice how they're dying on impact? This is what we want. And like I said, it doesn't go seamlessly. It'll, you know, you can see where it hiccuped and started back over. But uh, something else too about the particle emitter, 
you don't really need a whole lot of particles. I just gen these are all generated 50 particles a second. That's a lot. Uh, a whole bunch more would probably clutter your scene unless your particles are really, really small. So uh, you're going to want to weigh those decisions when you're when you're generating this stuff too. But anyway, uh, that's your snowfall. Uh, it's pretty quick and easy and actually kind of fun. So uh, anyway, that's it for this time. I'm Kripe Man, and I'll talk to you again later. Bye.